Well, the minute that I got into council, uh, it, you know, I, I won an election. It's Christmas time just before I take the oath of office. I'm shopping with my wife in downtown Cleveland, and all of a sudden all the lights go off. Christmas disappears. Now, Cleveland had been having blackouts at inopportune times. We have a public power system. That system has competed door to door with a private utility monopoly in about a third of the city. But the city kept having outages and I wonder what's going on here. And so when I got into council, I found out that the private power company was blocking the city from making repairs on its generators so we could generate power. And in doing that, it made the city system less reliable. They were, they were basically lobbying the city council to stop our municipal system from working. As the story goes on, I discover that some of the blackouts, which the city was experiencing, would, were being engineered by the private power company. That when the city needed a transfer of power, the private power company operated it in such a way as to create a blackout on the Muni light system. And then they'd send their salesmen into Muni light areas saying, ah, oh, looks like your company doesn't work too well. Why don't you sign up with us? There's a lot of dirty tricks. And the story is one of, of corporate sabotage, of corporate espionage. But it's also- Sounds like something- Go ahead. Sounds like something you would hear, Congressman, in like a third world country. Doesn't sound like something that would happen in Ohio. Well, it did. And you have to keep in mind, at that point, Cleveland, Ohio, was the number three corporate capital in America. And the corporations had decided that they just were going to back their member, the Cleveland Electric Illuminating Company, in its effort to take over Muni Light. And at the same time, Cleveland was the number three, uh, was the bombing capital of America. Mob factions were at war with each other for control of gambling, prostitution, loan sharking, vices of all kinds. And that, you know, war broke out into the open. And it was against that backdrop that I end up uh, running for mayor on a pledge to save our city's municipal electric system from a takeover. Now, keep in mind, the system had been sold. I intervened. When I intervened, a high power rifle shot missed my head by a fraction of an inch. And I didn't realize until I was mayor that there was an active assassination plot that there was so much at stake with this little utility that the private utility wanted to eliminate competition, be able to charge whatever they could to all utility customers in the area and be able to start paying off the debts that were growing for them on nuclear power plants that they had built, which were not being used and which were not useful. And so they, they had a financial and there was a point when I became mayor that whatever they could do to get me out of the way, they were prepared to do. Wow. So how I was going to ask that question. How did you live to tell this tale? Because it seems like with that type of lawlessness and all those entrenched economic interests, they were going to stop you, whatever the costs. Uh, luck. I mean, absolute luck. I'll give you an example. I was supposed to be the Grand Marshal in a parade on the east side of Cleveland, a pri primarily African-American area, uh, around Columbus uh, Day in 1978. And I was waiting to meet with Carl Stokes, who uh, had, was the first African-American elected mayor of a big city, Mayor Cleveland, in 1967. I was waiting to meet with Carl Stokes, and at that point, Carl was a uh, 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 making his name in broadcasting in New York City. So while I was waiting for Carl, I'm upstairs in my library in the very home that I'm talking to you from now. Um, I suddenly passed out. And when I woke up, I, there was blood everywhere. I didn't know what had happened there. I mean, my, my, I was covered in blood from top to bottom. And, um, I slumped back into the chair. My wife at this point was calling Carl, who had arrived to come upstairs. 
he lifts me up out of the bed, uh, out of out of the chair, puts me in, the, in bed, and the ambulance is on its way. It turned out that I had a uh, an ulcer that broke over an artery, and I was bleeding to death. And I was rushed to Hillcrest Hospital, where over a period of time I was transfused uh, six units, which is like a complete transfusion. Um, when I woke, when I came to. I saw police everywhere at the hospital. And I, I talked to the chief of police. I said, what the heck's going on here? Well, they told me that they had discovered that there was this plot that was supposed to be executed while I was in that parade. And if I had, if I had been in that parade, I may not have lived to tell about it. And so because I was rushed to the hospital instead, I avoided that uh, very dangerous and possibly fatal encounter.